welcome. I pray that this will be a comfort, blessing and edifying to all who listen. Let's read the scriptures. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus speaking says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he, to whomsoever the Son, will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus goes on to say, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Let's go to Exodus 33. In Exodus 33, Moses has a conversation with the Lord. We'll go down through that conversation. See how it relates to what Jesus is saying in Matthew 11. Before we start here, though, it's important to have a look at the previous verse, verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, the young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, and then we'll go and have a look at what is spoken in this conversation. But there's a reason I come back to this verse first. Because the Lord here, who spake unto Moses face to face, as a man that speaketh unto his friend, is not the Lord. Moses is speaking to here. The text of the conversation will reveal what I mean by that. So the Lord here spake to Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. No man has seen the, Lord, the face of the Father. No man has sp spoken to the Father face to face here on earth, at least not whilst we're in our sinful flesh, our fleshly body. Our flesh can't stand and present itself in front of the Father. But the Father sends the Son to be his advocate and mediator for us to connect us back to the Father. So the Lord that spake to Moses face to face is Christ. He is the visible image of the invisible Father. 
and as a man speaketh unto his friend again it's christ that calls us his believers he calls us friend so the lord spake unto moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend this is christ speaking face to face with moses his friend then we have a little narrative here and he turned again into the camp but his servant joshua the son of nun a young man departed not out of the temple this breaks up the narrative between the lord speaking to moses and moses speaking to the lord there's a passing of time going on here let's read down through the conversation and the text itself will prove that the lord here is not jesus and moses said unto the lord see thou sayest unto me bring up this people and yet thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. So Moses is quoting the Lord here. He's speaking the Lord's words back to the Lord saying I know thee by name I know you Moses by name and thou has also found grace in my sight this is still Moses speaking now therefore I pray thee if I have found grace in thy sight show me now thy way that I may know thee that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Moses is speaking in prayer. We'll come back to these verses shortly. And he said, this is the Lord speaking back to Moses now. He said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Sounds very much like Christ. And he said unto him, Moses speaking back to the Father. That's who the Lord is in these verses. Moses speaking back to the Lord, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he, Moses, said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he the Lord says, I will make all my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face, but there shall no man see me and live And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face 
shall not be seen. Okay. Two different lords. The one who spake with Moses face to face and spake, speak to him as a friend. And the Lord here who says, Thou canst not see my face. My face shall not be seen. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail here. So we see the Lord, which is Jesus, the Son, speaking to Moses face to face as a man speaketh to unto his friend. Another event taking place, showing a passing of time, and then Moses speaking to the Father. and speaking to the Father in prayer. See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people. Moses speaking to the Father, saying, Thou sayest unto me, the Father has spoken to him through the Holy Spirit. See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. The Father knows Moses by name. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. This is what the Father says to Moses. And Moses is saying this, but quoting the Father there, and continues in his speech. Now therefore I pray thee, this is in prayer, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee. that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. <coughs> what does Jesus say? He says, I will give thee rest, learn of me. Moses here speaking to the Father says, show me now thy way. That's Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Moses says to the Father, show me Christ that I may know thee. That I may know thee, the Father. Now, why would Moses be praying to be shown Christ that he can know the Father when Moses already knows Christ and is praying to the Father? Show me now thy way, that I may know thee. Moses is saved. And he knows. He knows Christ, and therefore he knows the Father. We know that Moses is saved. We know that he has not just a cognitive knowledge of Christ. He already has a relational knowledge, experience of Christ.
Moses heard Christ, the angel of the Lord, in the burning bush. He has a relational a relationship with Christ when he was sent back into Egypt. When the Lord brought his people out of Egypt under leadership of Moses. With the destruction of the Egyptian army at the Red Sea, with the crossing of the Red Sea, with the years in the wilderness, Christ was there. Moses has just come down from the top of the mount in Exodus 32, 40 days, communing with Christ. So not only is Moses saved, not only does he have a cognitive, intellectual understanding of Christ, he has a relational experience with Christ. But what's going on here? Show me now thy way that I may know thee. This is going beyond that. This is Moses showing that he understands that Christ will come as the Messiah, the sacrificial lamb, slain. And he knows that it's Christ's death, burial, and resurrection that will bring him directly into the presence of the Father. In other words, Moses is preaching the gospel to the Father. And the Father responds with the gospel when he says, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Moses has asked a question. Speaking to the Father, he says, See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Here the father responds, my presence shall go with thee. His presence is Christ. Let's go to Isaiah 63, just very briefly. In Isaiah 63, We'll go down to verse 9. Isaiah 63, verse 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. We know this is Christ, both from the New Testament scriptures and from the Old Testament narrative. The Savior is mentioned here in Isaiah 63, for he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their saviour. A promise, a promise that those that belong to him, believers, so he was their saviour. Again, this is looking toward the Messiah coming in the flesh, Christ coming in the flesh. 
to live a perfect life for us, for all believers. He lives a perfect life in our place because we cannot live that life. And then he takes our imperfection, our sin, iniquity, onto himself and dies in our place on the cross. He dies. He's buried on the, on the third day. The resurrection. So in all their afflict, affliction, he was afflicted. And Christ here is called the angel of his presence. The angel of his presence saved them. Christ is the visible, audible presence of the Father, the one who serves the Father, the one who, in his own words, came to do the will of his Father, the angel of his presence on earth. His presence, the angel of his presence, saved them. So the Father says to Moses, my presence, meaning Christ. Christ, the Messiah, shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Yeah. Moses is already saved. This is all gospel speak pointing to toward Christ coming in human flesh to be our living sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice, the lamb slain. My presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. The Father is saying to Moses, I will give thee rest. Jesus in Matthew 11 says, I will give thee rest. The work and will of the Father and the work and the will of the Son is one and the same and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit also gives us rest. He is the comforter. He is the one in whom the promises of God are revealed and sealed within us on salvation. My presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest, says the Father. And he, Moses said unto him, he said, if thy presence go not with me, Carry us not up. Hence. Where is hence? To the Father. So if Christ, thy presence is Christ, his Son, thy Son. If thy Son, thy presence, go not with me, carry us not up. Hence. He's speaking the gospel. Carry us not up. Moses clearly knows the gospel in full. He knows the Messiah's coming. He knows who the Messiah is, but it's Jesus who he communes with on the top of Mount Sinai in the burning bush. Converses with. This is conversational. What we have here is we have the gospel being exchanged. Moses to the father, the father to Moses. It's a perpetual conversation between believers and God. Every time we speak the gospel, the father is listening. Every time we pray to God, it's gospel conversation. If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence, meaning 
backed up to the Father. It's carrying up in resurrection. Moses knows that he will die, he will be buried. And then when Christ comes as the sacrifice to die, be buried and resurrected, then Christ leads leads in resurrection. Christ, the firstborn of the dead. First fruit of resurrection is Christ. Moses continues, For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? It's not that Moses doesn't know. The Lord has given him grace to save him. He knows he's saved. Is it not in that thou goest with us? Wow. Thou, the Father. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, believers, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. We are sanctified the moment we believe, the moment we're saved, the moment we enter into eternal life. We are separated. That's what sanctified means, made holy, separated from all the world, all the people that are on are upon the face of the earth. Justification and sanctification are immediate upon belief. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken promise again how many promises in the bible in the old testament old testament and new but in this context how many promises were given to believers that messiah was coming and going to fulfill death burial and resurrection for believers by the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ it's promised throughout all the scriptures, starting at the very beginning of Genesis, all the way through. So the Father says to Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, saying, You've been saved by grace. Wait upon the Messiah. He's coming. He's coming and you will be in my presence. But thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. The Father speaking to a believer, in this case Moses. And he, Moses said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. His glory is Christ risen. Christ risen is the glory of the Father. He's speaking of Christ here again. I beseech thee, show me thy glory, Moses. So wants resurrection. He so wants believers to be. He's already reconciled to the Father, but he wants believers to be taken up, to be in the presence of God the Father. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. All my goodness. I will make all my goodness as before thee, and I will proclaim the name of Christ, the Lord, before thee. These are promises that the 
gospel will be fulfilled in Christ Jesus. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face clearly, the Father speaking here, for there shall no man see me and live. Not while we're in this flesh body. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me. Again, promise. Promise to believers. Behold, there is a place by me. Do you remember Jesus says he, he's going to prepare a place for believers? Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon Christ, a rock. Thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock. Who puts us in Christ when we believe? The Father puts us in Christ when we believe. I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand and thou shalt see my back parts but my face shall not be seen he's saying wait wait on the messiah wait on the messiah and of course moses goes on to have many other interactions with the rock jesus before he dies And the Lord is good. Both the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are good to give us assurance and comfort all the way through. So when we go back now to Matthew 11, these verses will hold, hopefully, great significance all things jesus speaking all things are delivered unto me of my father no man knoweth the son but the father and neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him christ reveals the father come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest now these scriptures are most beautiful in the sense that we can be drawn back to these such passages over and over again to have a great sense of relationship with jesus The scriptures are a comfort to us in the wider context. In a specific context, though, Jesus is saying this, that those that know the Old Testament scriptures, those that will know that God spoke unto Moses and said, I will give thee rest. They're seeing that Jesus is the one who the Father was speaking of, my presence, the rock, my glory, my way. That's why when Jesus says here, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, he's giving a big, big reference. to the Father speaking of him, the one to come in Exodus 33 and many other places in the Old Testament, of course. But this is a specific reference to Exodus 33.
like I say, I hope that's a blessing there for you to see such beautiful gospel conversation in in the scriptures, old and new. All our conversations with God are to do with his son, to do with the father's son, I should say. I'll leave that there for today. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.